Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. Search for my name on YouTube to find my channel and videos. I just did a demonstration cut on a seed coat I already pried open. Obviously, it's very thick and fibrous. The seed is atypical. It's got a green end where the root apical meristem is. So that's where the stem cells are at the very point. And they're going to expand, divide, and create a tap root which will grow into the entire root system. So if you break that off, then nothing's going to happen. The seed will die or never develop. And that brown paper can't be peeled off completely in this case, although in some cases it's pretty easy to get rid of the whole thing. It's not necessary at all. So the first order of business is I'm taking a heavy-duty pair of scissors and I'm pinching this Snapple bottle. It's a two-liter bottle that's been rinsed out. I'm cutting off the top portion. I'm going to invert the top and tape it in place and that will create a great disposable incubation chamber for my plant. So I'm going to orient this cap, um, this top third, or it's not even a third, and hold it in place with some packaging tape. That will ensure that it won't wobble. We want the plant to be experiencing gravity in the same direction and not be changing orientation all the time otherwise that's really going to mess up the direction or the progress of the root growth and later on the shoot growth. So I'm taking some plastic wrap and I've got to create some spacers in there. I'm not going to just put the seed in there directly. I'm going to put in a few wads of plastic wrap. It's uh, nice, fluffy and soft and then I'm going to see how I can orient this seed best so that it's fixed in place and then I'm going to spray some distilled water so I've edited out a lot of footage that's just a waste of time I only want to show you the gist of things although this is a very long video it would be probably three or four hours long if I didn't do all this editing out so that's how the seed is oriented and I have this cabinet here on the bottom in which I'm going to incubate. So I've sealed this up with plastic wrap. It should be 100% humidity inside the chamber, but as you can see, the ambient humidity is only 53%. Temperature is in the high 70s and Fahrenheit. So it's day three. And we're going to open this up. It's 78.4 Fahrenheit, 42% humidity. So 86 Fahrenheit is about 30 Celsius for those of you who use metric system. And as you can see, there's already a bit of pink in there. And I'm going to spray some more water, although in hindsight, while narrating this, I'm not sure if that's completely necessary. It stays really wet in there, although when water evaporates and shifts around inside, even in a closed chamber, that can mean the seed itself is dry on the surface. So it's day five. As you can see, the environmental conditions are very consistent around the air conditioning. It's uh, summertime, and as you can see, the pink root has elongated. Um, that's generally how you know there's success on the way, when the tip turns pink and a pink root emerges. So it's largely white and a little spike down there. You can see some lateral growth in the works. So it's day eight. Temperature and humidity are about the same. That's great. It could be warmer, but personally, I don't like sitting in a room all day with the temperature in the 80s and Fahrenheit or around 30 Celsius. That's really hot. So it's more of a pinkish, purplish now, which is good. Um, color change is the first thing you notice. Then, as you can see, the entire root is turned sort of a pinkish, purplish. It's a uh, quite beautiful. I'm going to spray some more water. I don't think it can really hurt at this point, although in my experience you definitely don't want your germinating seeds to be completely soaked in water. Even if it has hydrogen peroxide, it's going to drown. It's just too wet and then it'll rot and grow mold and that's the end of it. But if you just spray some water you'll do fine and have it growing mostly in air so it needs to get a lot of aeration. Root systems use oxygen. They don't need any carbon dioxide. Only leaves need carbon dioxide to photosynthesize. So it's day 10. Let's see what today holds in store for us. 
temperature and humidity are again pretty constant and it's kind of hard to see from here but you can see some lateral root growth which is great little white spikes coming out it's really hard to see from that angle from the bottom and the side because the bottleneck itself is quite thick and warps the light so it's uh, not easy to see what's going on in there with all that plastic wrap in the way but this is the best I could do um, many other systems or just growing things naturally you don't get to see any of this at all so I consider you know what I see here to be a great advantage It's design that I've set up so it's day 11 and as you can see the lateral roots are growing longer they're turning pink and purplish themselves so mango seeds are very beautiful when they germinate they've got all this uh, pinkish purplish colors um, whites you know even greens in this case and we have browns and yellows so um, they're quite colorful and that's not something you would see with all plants so it's a very aesthetic plant to germinate and look at uh, many other seedlings just start off tiny this one starts off in beast mode it's just huge and it grows very quickly so it's day 13 and I've sprayed all this stuff the runoff has chunks in it so I'm not sure if that's a result of me watering too much or it's just something that will naturally happen but I'm not too happy with that I don't want stuff to start rotting and giving off smells and if you have a big seed in there that's rotting or giving off chunks that are rotting then eventually it's going to stink up the place and possibly attract bugs but I'm just more concerned about rot so I'm going to peel off this tape and remove everything and give you a great look at what's inside so of course we're going to reuse this container I regret not having peeled off or washed off the Snapple bottle label if you have the entire bottle while still full of beverage uh, in the refrigerator and you take it out and let it sweat for a few hours while you pour cups from it the label will pretty much come off the glue behind that label is 100 percent water soluble and what doesn't come off immediately can just be gotten rid of by uh, scraping with a paper towel or your fingernails so i sprayed some hydrogen peroxide in there to disinfect um, the reservoir to prevent any kind of rot. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is great at eating up smells and killing microbes but it has its limits. It can't do everything. So this tap root looks pretty good. Um, it has a drop of water at the end which I'm kind of worried about as to whether that will create a drowning effect for the cells there. And as you can see just by that bit of um, manipulation in the water this label is ready to come off so I'll get off as much as I can but it's not really a big concern right now we want this thing to grow and then we can deal with that later so it's day 15 and I'm going on a two-week vacation I'm prepping for this vacation to prevent dehydration I don't want this thing to dry out which I could easily see it doing it might not look like much now there's a shoot right there that's beautiful so that's that's where it comes from so what I'm doing now is I'm taking a microfiber towel that's been washed and never used and spraying it with hydrogen peroxide to make sure it's largely sterile although in this kind of open environment that's nearly impossible plus I just set it down on the stove top which is mostly clean but it could still have microbes spores which I'm sure there are plenty of So I'm taking off the top as you can see the lateral root growth looks quite promising some of the ends look a little dare I say rotten but otherwise than that that's a very beautiful you know sea urchin like look but this root tip of the tap root just looks gross it looks like it's rotting to be honest and I'm, I'm kind of worried about that so I'm going to shove this in not perfectly down but sort of in a inclined plane like a wedge so we get to see all the growth on one side and I'm going to spray distilled water to kind of clean everything off. I haven't used hydrogen peroxide itself on the root system just in case that's too much for the roots to handle although I think a 0.5, 0.6% solution of hydrogen peroxide which is typically what I put in my bottle roughly is not really a threat. After all uh, hydrogen peroxide is used in disinfectants to treat wounds and 
to disinfect contact lenses. So it's pretty safe unless you up the concentration to something ridiculous like maybe 10%. So it's day 17, the last day before I go on my two week vacation. So I have something planned out to prevent this from drying out, but at the same time allow for a lot of shoot growth. The shoot may look very tiny right now, but it's going to get very, very tall very fast. So I have no idea what's going to happen in two weeks. The seed itself um, doesn't look rotten. It just looks um, sort of wrinkly. That's all right. And these root tips are just going everywhere. So there's a lot of lateral root growth. As I suspected, uh, there's a little bit of mold and discoloration at the very tip there where it touches the towel. It's a little discolored. So I'm thinking that root tip definitely rotted. I'm clearing room for where I think the shoot will grow and sealing everything in this very tall container. Container is not cheap, but it's also not that expensive. It's a OXO brand. It's really great for filming in the future. It's clear. Well, I'm not sure what I'll be growing this mango seed in later on. I'm just going to give it one good spray down with some more distilled water and pour some water directly on top so it soaks the microfiber towel. The towel is very very absorbent but I want to make sure the plant has a water source and that's also in case uh, some kind of moisture can escape this container over the two weeks. I don't want everything to dry out. So I run the risk of creating mold or having the plant die from mold, but at the same time, the other risk would be to come back and see everything had died from dehydration. So it's day 32, I'm bursting with anticipation. And after this two week vacation, you can see there's a very long pink shoot, although I'm kind of worried it's bumped up against the top. I hope this warp won't be permanent, that the plant can straighten itself out. Otherwise, we're gonna have a really serious aesthetic problem if it's growing kind of crooked and sideways. So this is a great container, but I'm going to take this thing out and it's kind of eerie how that moisture with no wind or sun has created this cloud inside. It's not really a cloud, it's just uh, the condensation is so fine that it looks like um, fog basically. And as you can see there is root growth everywhere. Water usage uh, not surprisingly is non-existent because it's a closed system. I'd be very shocked if there were no water in there. So I'm making the transition from growing in a dark cabinet to growing on the countertop now that it has a shoot system. It's got some leaves. They're yellow. They're not green yet. Nothing's really a dark green and photosynthesizing at full capacity, but I want to make sure that it gets some of what it needs, but I also don't want it to be outside because the sun would be too harsh and also bugs will come from miles around just to feast on the plant. So it's day 33. I have it in this tin foil container. It's tin foil wrapped and as you can see the stem is very pale on the bottom and the leaves look like yellow fingernails that are curled up at this point. Claws really. And on day 34 I noticed it definitely was getting more green but I'm pretty worried about this overall situation. I don't have enough lux enough units of light coming from these lights and as you can see the development seems to be fine but how much of this is just a programmed innate growth that would happen regardless of whether this thing was sitting in the dark all day or not I don't know so it's day 36 you could see a little bit of a, a new leaf coming out there on day 37 between days 36 and now I hid my mango seedling in this cabinet because I had something being repaired and I didn't want the maintenance crew to accidentally knock this over. I know that they probably won't in all likelihood, but I don't want this project to get dashed on the floor. So as you can see, there's been more leaf growth despite being in the dark. So that kind of confirms my worries that this is just not getting enough sunlight. There is no difference between being in the dark and being out under uh, lights like that and these fluorescent lights. I'm not sure that they installed any LED lights um, Maybe some of them are are kind of a waste. Uh, they give off the whole spectrum and that's not what plants need plants need red and blue light So I decided to move my entire setup 
into a closet, my walk-in closet. Bought this LED panel. It's got red and blue LEDs. I've never bought anything like this before. And this was actually pretty cheap. It's um, just something I got off Amazon. Um, not the cheapest, not the most expensive, but I think it definitely has enough juice to power any kind of indoor plant growing needs. This is mostly for fun. I'm not any kind of professional at this stuff and certainly I imagine most people would be using this to grow something else. Um, so I think, yeah, this will provide for everything my mango seed needs in the way of photosynthesis and I'm going to let it sit like this for quite a while maybe 16 hours a day as long as I can keep it on so on day 38 this is just a day later I had left the LED panel on for nearly 24 hours straight and as you can see the growth is very substantial it's very very promising in my mind that LED panel has paid off already so as you can see the leaves are a very beautiful reddish purple and we've got more leaves on the way so I'm just brimming with hope and excitement I think this is on its way to having a very healthy development over the next few weeks and I really don't foresee any problems coming anytime soon so these leaves will get longer at an astonishing rate Judging by how much longer they got just the next day on day 39, they're a darker color now. And that's to be expected. The leaves are getting thicker, but they're very, very droopy, which I don't really like. I want my leaves to be more upright and erect and expand laterally so they don't brush against each other and droop all the way to the bottom to hit the top of the container, hit the foil and the plastic. I don't want my leaves to warp. And so far this is uh, kind of reminiscent of some other mango seed germination attempts I've had before. Uh, the leaves just don't perk up. But I think things will be different this time. I'm very confident. And of course, if you clicked on this video, you've already seen the final thumbnail. So that means things did succeed. So it's day 40. I'm clearing room for the elongating leaves because when I move this, from outside the cabinet to come film under these lights in the kitchen. I heard this leaf tip uh, scraping against the aluminum foil. It's kind of an unpleasant sound because you're worried about the plant getting hurt and the tip getting uh, burned essentially. So I took off the aluminum foil and that exposed the seed inside and it's basically all green. So the green is a pretty typical phenotype that you get from exposing a seed to light for several weeks and that's exactly what happened. It's not that much light but now that I have the LED panel I'm sure a lot of red and blue light gets in. So there's still water sitting at the bottom and as far as I can tell there's been a lot of root growth but at the same time it's sort of disappointing not just because of the mold you see here in front of you, but also because I don't see any semblance of normal robust root growth. It's just sort of stringy and bushy. I don't see a deep tap root to replace the one that was rotted away quite a while ago. So it's day 41 and I'm cutting away a ventilation window in my container. Structurally it's still sound, but I just want airflow to hopefully get rid of this mold problem that I'm seeing on the roots. The ones that went all the way up there probably did so because there was uh, sprayed water all the way up there trapped under the plastic wrap at the time. But now that it's not there, they're sort of a darkish brown. So there's a lot of mold that's very worrisome. The shoot system looks beautiful. The leaves seem to have expanded in surface area. They look more translucent today. Although I kind of see hints of green coming in so maybe we'll lose this uh, pinkish purplish color um, the red will be gone and we'll get thick green leaves which is normal but I was starting to wonder there for a while as to whether the leaves would look like this forever and that's uh, barring a huge 
unforeseen mutation that won't be the case. So I've used distilled water so far. I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide right now. It's still that 0.5 to 0.6 percent solution just to see if I can kill the mold. So it's day 42. The seed is a beautiful green. The stem is getting greener as well. And there's sort of a blemish at the base of the stem as you can see. But everything else from the stem up looks really good. The leaves are getting longer. They're getting uh, wider as well. Not so much thicker for now. And as you can see, the roots will maintain this color forever. What would you call this? Um, a reddish, a burgundy, sort of a brownish when they get older. It's a uh, day 43. And as you can see, the leaves are getting much greener. They're getting wider. They're blocking the view of everything in the background. And there's a little bit of activity in the shoot apical meristem. It looks like maybe two or three new leaves could spring forth. And that's great news because in series past and past mango seed germination attempts, uh, the most I could get to was that point from my original mango series at which I had a full set of green leaves outdoors in soil and then everything succumbed to root rot uh, or maybe bugs or something like that. The exact cause was unknown of death. So I'm going to spray some more hydrogen peroxide in there. The difference this time is I get to see very very clearly everything that's going on with the root system uh, notwithstanding the stuff that's entwined with a towel. So it's day 44. And because of my full visibility for everything, I get to observe this every day up close from top to bottom. I therefore have a huge edge over my previous mango growing series where I didn't know what was going on beneath the base of the stem. So if the root system has problems, the whole plant perishes. The shoot system perishes, it can still come back if the roots are healthy and have adequate nutrient stores. So as you can see here, there's still a lot of water gathered down there. Maybe I just have too much water in there. Maybe that's uh, definitely why I got mold in the first place, but I'm going to look to see if I can regulate the amount of water that I have just sitting in there. Maybe it's just too much. Although mangoes do send out a very deep tap root to essentially drink water from the water table in my impression in the wild so I'm getting some more mold again more fruiting bodies and that's very worrisome the hydrogen peroxide was a good attempt but I think unless I solve the cause of this problem I'm not going to stop seeing the symptoms so as you can see there are some roots burrowing through this microfiber towel. This thing is completely waterlogged and sodden. So I'm going to pour out this uh, water hydrogen peroxide runoff and see if that gets something to happen because uh, you know, the leaves have been doing fine enough but it doesn't seem like they're progressing as fast as they were before. Spray some hydrogen peroxide and the difference now is I won't have the towel in standing water although it looks pretty wet still. So if there's uh, too much runoff from this spraying and disinfection, I can pour that out too. So that's a huge advantage of having this uh, cut open window in the plastic bottle. So yeah, I'll get rid of that. So on day 46, I bought a pair of LED light panels and light stands for better indoor videography. This is on my nightstand. Everything looks way better. I wish I had done this at the very beginning of this series, but better late than never. So this leaf is very curled, and these light panels give off, depending on how close you have the plant to it, up to maybe 20,000 lux. So that's equivalent to low level direct sunlight. 120,000 is full sunlight, maybe around noontime. Or throughout most of the day actually if you have direct sunlight shining on a lux meter that's how much of a reading you'll get so it seems like there's been a improvement in the mold problem since i poured all the excess standing water out and this thing just looks beautiful i'm really pleased with the videography and this is a therm pro 
a hygrometer, a temperature monitor. It's got a tracking for 24 hours or all time. So I'll use that to keep track of temperatures instead and humidity as well. I'm going to spray some more hydrogen peroxide. At this point, I'm not too sure what this does. Maybe that's not even garden variety mold. Maybe it's uh, mycorrhizal fungi. One can hope. So these uh, leaf primordia haven't really gone anywhere. It's day 49. That's what the light panel looks like on. So um, I try to have on uh, sunglasses, safety glasses when I'm in this room looking at this light or I close my eyes and then I just turn off the switch because uh, blue light can be damaging to your eyes and it's not just from that um, some people even have suggested that computer monitor blue light and blue light from other electronics can be bad if you stare at them all day long because it's uh, more high energy shorter wavelengths so now I can just film on my stove top this mold problem is just refusing to go away. Uh, there's nothing I can do but let it dry out and wait and spray some more hydrogen peroxide. It's day 52. Leaf system is beautiful. Shoot system rather. And the base of the stem has a little bit of an orange brownish bruising or whatever that was. But it was always like that. And you can see there are tufts of mold in there. So I'm thinking maybe this towel is just still too wet. It's nice to have the standing water out, but essentially everything is soaked. So I'll do the best I can to get some hydrogen peroxide in there, freshen things up a bit, pour out the water, and then find ways to dry this off because it's, uh, you know, this really doesn't seem to be working. It's day 54. As you can see, some places where the root tips are touching are discolored. Things are sloughing off of the roots. Uh, there are some dead roots in there, the ones that are nearly black or very dark brown. The seed itself still looks very healthy. It's a beautiful green. And the leaves are very beautiful. And this green is just very pleasing to the eye. But I don't think I'm getting much progress. It's just kind of stalling, which makes me really worried because that's what happened to my very first mango growing series. Lasted for about eight months, but really the first uh, 37 days were where I saw all the growth and then nothing happened. So maybe the seed isn't providing for all the nutrient needs. I'm going to try to get some nitrogen, um, phosphorus, potassium in there. Actually, this new miracle Grow has boron and copper and some other trace metals. And I'm going to cover for all the trace metals and minerals later on. So this is a fresh box of miracle Grow. I'm going to get some dissolved in here in very uh, dilute solution, following the instructions more or less. And then I'm going to squirt some of that in there so I don't burn everything by over-fertilizing. These are the vitamins I take. They're mostly calcium carbonate by mass, I believe, but they've got all sorts of metals and minerals in there that plants will need. So these two things combined together will provide for a complete uh, growing solution. Um, a lot of people who don't understand chemistry will uh, basically balk at this, but you know I'm growing everything synthetically anyway, so what does it matter? So I'm squirting some of this on the roots. Um, it's a very dilute solution. Should be fine and I'm not going to use the whole vitamin pill. But I've crushed it up and it makes quite a mess. I'm just going to scatter some of that in there so the plant gets all the calcium and other minerals that it needs, trace metals. And it's got a bunch of vitamins which the plants don't need. They can make all the vitamins themselves to my knowledge. You can see some of it on the ridges inside of the bottle. But over time, I'm hoping that every time I spray, I'll disperse what's in those vitamins. And basically, some of that will get into the plants. So as you can see, this is the temperature range, humidity range, um, all time versus 24 hours. So it's in a fairly tight range. It's growing in a closet. Uh, summertime made it hit 86.7 Fahrenheit. That's 30 Celsius. It's still not very hot. And there's still standing water in here. So um, I know it's mostly hydrogen peroxide or whatever. 
You know, I was actually kind of worried about mixing hydrogen peroxide with uh, you know, the vitamins and the fertilizer because it could potentially react. Hydrogen peroxide is a free radical molecule that can uh, create some other compounds um, on paper at least with uh, all the stuff that's in there. So I was kind of worried about that, but I don't think it's really done anything. So I'm not too surprised at that either. Hydrogen peroxide is pretty, it's pretty mild. So it's day 58. You can see root growth in there. Um, there's no standing water right now. But uh, yeah, we've still got mold. And more importantly, the growth is pretty much stalled out. So nothing's really going on. And I saw for the first time these burns on the undersides of one of these leaves. Um, not all of them, just that one to my knowledge. And it also looks like there's a, you know, just uh, some fluid being excreted from all the stomata of this plant. If not from the stomata, I don't know where it would come from, but. So I'm just going to spray with some more hydrogen peroxide and uh, try to keep at it and get this mold problem under control. I've been pouring out all this uh, runoff. So, yeah, and kind of running out of answers. I don't know why this has stalled for so long other than the fact that this mold is there. That is kind of a tell that the root system is getting way too much uh, water. But how much water is too much and how much is too little, I don't know. So it's day 60 and the root growth continues. So if it was really just purely overwatering, would we still have root growth continuation I don't know I, I don't think it would be the case but I'll just keep the bottom um, basically dry and provide drainage manually so when I took a further inspection a closer look at uh, the undersides of these leaves I noticed a lot of little droplets of something um, clearly no bugs can make their way all the way from the outside and past uh, sliding doors and window screens all the way into my closet. Well, maybe they could smell everything from a distance, but when I touched this stuff, I was surprised because it was really sticky. It's sort of like sap or syrup. And that made me think that the plant is getting just way too much photosynthesis. It's making all this extra sugar water that has nowhere to go or be used or and it can't be stored in this case for a mango in the root system unlike something like a potato. So what I'm going to do is to spray the undersides with distilled water. I think what caused those two black spots on the underside of that one leaf is basically an excess of a highly concentrated sugar which created a burn. So it's day 65 and as I was talking about earlier if you have anything besides rain, which is almost distilled water, or distilled water on leaves being applied over and over, it's going to burn the leaves. So that's the temperature and humidity range. Still got the same old, same old going on, same problems, uh, same stalled growth. And there's a little bit of discoloration there. There's a little bit more development, but it's seemingly ground to a halt. So I'm going to remove some of this plastic wrap and get a better look at the seed, see if anything has changed there. So that brown paper is still on there. Um, I bet I could get rid of that as long as I don't cause any damage. You know, why not? And maybe I should provide for more aeration. I was thinking maybe provide for aeration from the top so we can get some airflow growing from the top to bottom. And this thing just came off like that. And it's surprisingly sterile, no mold or anything. It still looks the same as it always did. Well, I don't know if the inside was black like that, but um, maybe it wasn't, but at least it's not moldy. So let me see how much of this plastic I can get rid of. I noticed something really weird at the base where the stem turns into the root. It's almost like aphids or some other kind of gross bug are just living there in a colony but when I scraped it with my fingernail I saw nothing move and those are really hard bumps um, they're basically part of the plant they're not bugs 
Um, at least not some kind of weird bug that I don't have any knowledge of. When I had scale insects on my Joshua tree, I didn't know what those were for the better part of a year or a year and a half, and that's why the infestation got really bad. So I made sure to scrape with my fingernail. Put a paper towel in there to absorb some moisture and later on a yellow microfiber cloth and that will basically dry out this towel a lot faster. I don't want to use a blow dryer or anything. You can't apply heat to a plant because a plant can't regulate its body temperature like we can and everything is very high surface area to volume ratio here. If you just blow heated air on it that could kill everything almost instantly. So it's day 70 and there's still a lot of condensation in the areas where the towel is wedged up against but the rest of the towel looks a lot drier than it did before it's no longer sopping wet but now we got mold everywhere anyway so uh you know did that really do anything was it the right move i don't know um, but i'm willing to let this strategy go on for a little longer to see if it pays off and i'm only spraying the bare minimum i believe i need to keep this thing hydrated and as you can see, there are three leaf primordia that look primed and ready to go. That's really promising. I think that the strategy of drying out that towel is working. So the plant is very aesthetic now. It's got a longer stem and the leaves have really perked up and they're almost a parallel to the ground because of phototropism. Stay 73. So um, I've never had phototropism really go in my favor so to speak so uh, advantageously and just have it correct all of the bad posture of the leaves um, if you have everything growing outdoors then it'll try to follow the sun and on the balcony that would only be in one general direction so the leaves would always grow in a way from my plants that I didn't want them to grow and in this case they're just growing straight up which is great and uh, thankfully this is not a vine so that's a, a lot of problems avoided there so it's day 75 and the towel has dried out to a considerable degree you still got that condensation and these little um, root expansions through the towel seem fine uh, still shielding the top with plastic wrap so dust doesn't get in but I tend to keep my closet door shut and I'd recommend that everyone do that just so your clothes don't get dusty because uh, a lot of dust gets in there just by having the door open all day it's amazing how much dust uh, will accumulate on unworn clothes over time so as you can see there's leaf growth so the strategy is definitely something I can vouch for if you're doing this use towels paper towels or clean microfiber cloth to wick away all the wetness from your main towel that you're growing in and this strategy could conceivably work for things like dirt and whatnot or you could try placing a dry sponge with no detergent on top of the soil where it's really wet or into the soil to try to wick away moisture otherwise there's really no quick and fast way to get rid of moisture when you've uh, overwatered your pots so the leaves have grown the new leaves have grown considerably and with speed so that's very very promising it means that the plant in my opinion has the right level of hydration now it's not drowning in water but it's also not wanting for water so that's great it's day 79 and as you can see there that's the best this plant can do to mimic the taproot that it lost it's got some of those uh, very long feelers just kind of running around encircling the bottom of this pot so to speak and the mold problem is largely gone so it's amazing how that works I thought once you had a mold infestation it just keep growing until everything's dead but it stopped fruiting at least so that's really great and as you can see the three new leaves are beautiful but they have a big problem in that they're all um, trapped spatially by these existing six old leaves which are all curled um, extremely upwards due to phototropism so basically they have nowhere to go and some of them got all gnarled top two so it's day 82 and I have roots uh, not only encircling the bottom of this snapple bottle but uh, going into the middle as well 
So that's a good sign. Uh, continued leaf and root growth is very key to determining whether your plant is healthy or not. So one leaf did a straight shot out. It's really, really long. It could be the biggest leaf ever so far. And these top two are so warped because they twisted around, you know, like a thousand degrees just to get out of the way of the other leaves. So it's day 85. I'm starting to think that this towel may be getting too dry. I really have no idea what that sweet spot is to have continuous fast growth like this. And this is sort of like autumn in reverse. I know it's a little weird and unsightly to have a leaf sort of yellowish brown like that, but that's on its way to becoming a lush green, I believe. And this is yellow, so this beautiful reverse uh, autumn leaves effect in temperate forest is on full display. And one of the leaves is uh, sort of a peach red, nectarine red. So, um, yeah, I'll spray some water. I'll keep this thing hydrated. But at the same time, I have no idea how much I truly need to be watering. I can touch the towel, but just going by feel isn't a great gauge necessarily. And thankfully, those weren't bugs, that uh, cluster of bumps there. So this leaf is getting greener. It's taking quite a while, but it's the longest leaf already. And it's gotten a lot wider. So I'm hoping eventually phototropism will make the whole thing go parallel to the ground like these older six leaves. And these are, they're not damaged, but they're so warped, they might as well be. Um, they look a little better now than a few days ago, since they're bigger and colorful. And on day 90, the leaves wilted. So I think this microfiber towel is finally just too dry. You can see everything wilted down much like my first plant growing series so it's pretty much an emergency a state of emergency I need to do everything I can to get this back on track because there's really no reason why uh, leaves that were old and established should just suddenly droop like that so I started spraying a lot of distilled water I stopped using hydrogen peroxide because I didn't think um, it would do that much and on day 91 um, yeah, that towel still looks pretty dry. I tried to spray in there to activate some of the roots uh, trapped under the wads of plastic on top as well. So after three days of spraying and pouring small amounts of water onto the towel, I think spraying wasn't enough to get water to the bottom. Uh, despite how uh, hygroscopic the towels are, microfiber towels. So um, yeah, you can see everything's perked up again. It's beautiful. It's continuing to grow. It's day 94. And I like to spray the top, although I don't know whether the spraying of water, that act, will uh, accelerate this uh, apparent decomposition of the seed. It's turned yellow and um, yeah, sort of orange before. Now it's just yellow. So yeah, I kind of missed that green seed look, but eventually that thing might have to go. I don't know if it's still supplying nutrients to the plant. Um, it looks to be attached still, so I would think that it does. But in case the seed is no longer providing for the seedling, at least we fertilized that one time and all the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all the macro and micronutrients are stuck in that microfiber towel. They're not going anywhere. So it's day 98. And here's my setup. That was the power strip that I used to turn this thing on and off. I have another growing project that will turn into a series as well on this um, hygrometer thermometer combo. You can see the stats have changed in the range. There was a day of Santa Ana winds dryness and also it's fall now. It's mid-October so it's getting colder during the day and nights. So as you can see the roots as they get older they sort of appear to have a bark like covering they turn brown basically so that reddish color won't last forever it is very beautiful but um, it won't last forever I guess and I think this patch here this uh, orangey stuff is now more brown it's uh, the precursor of bark formation I believe so eventually the stem will be covered in that and we'll get to the stage at which this is a taller plant with a thicker stem, a trunk that resembles 
more of a small tree than a weed. So the three new leaves are looking better and better. They all look the same color now. Um, they have a very veiny vascular appearance which is really cool to look at. Although these two have very warped origins, they twisted you know, 720, 1080 degrees and whatnot. Um, at least we got this really long one, but it's still curled just like the leaf next to it. So it definitely seems to be a problem, um, improper leaf formation. If I had perfect growing conditions, I would probably have perfect leaves, but that's not the case. I've had a few bumps along the way, but overall I'm very pleased with the progress of the seedlings growth in the first 98 days.